Good evening, it's 6.05. Um, I'm gonna open up the meeting for Dudley Conservation. Can we have a roll call, please? Nancy Vakovic. James Kepke. George Slingo. Rand Michalajic. Bob Tuttle. Okay, first on it is a certificate of compliance for six Pond View Terrace. Has Matt looked at this? Somebody um, what's, Mac, what's Matt's recommendation? I have no idea. I haven't read it. I haven't seen it. Is it in here? No. That's all I got. Okay. Matt, did Matt call you or tell you? Matt was supposed to be here. Yeah, he called me. He said he's going to be here at 6.05. He lied. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to pass it and do the other ones? There's the, um, we can just table the next it one to see is if the 24. Huh? I'll just table it to see if he comes yep. in. Uh, yeah, but we don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, the next one is Request for determination of applicability for 24 Sawmill Road. And Matt <coughs> wrote on the paperwork, negative determination. So I make a motion that we um, grant a negative determination of applicability for 24 Sawmill Road. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. No cover page. No signature page. We need a signature. No, page. not for that one. No. No. Why not? Matt. You usually have them, don't you? For um, request for determination of applicability, there's no <laughs> signature page. I'm sorry, what? For a request for determination of applicability, isn't there a signature page? There should be. No. Let me see the form. That's the yeah. That's the this is the request, not the actual determination. Okay. So you're looking for if you're looking to sign off on it, it's a WPA two. If it's the application. There should be a signature here. This right. is the signature page. Okay. So the signature page is in the back. It just needs a signature. A signature or no? It needs um, oh, an applicant yes. signature. Oh, okay. All right. So then we'll just table that. So then number two needs to we'll go back to applicant signature. We'll go back to um, Pond View Terrace, certificate of compliance. <clears throat> Have you looked at that yet? Yes, you can issue the certificate on that one. I'm just going to go use the men's room because I got stuck in traffic in Worcester for like yeah. a half hour. <laughs> okay. I make a motion that we, we grant a certificate of compliance for six Pond View Terrace. Second. Motions been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So then, our our request for determination really isn't right. Isn't the, the the vote we took isn't necessary, right? To, at this point. Correct. Okay. Extension of order of conditions for forty four Alton Drive. Dudley Estates, Jesse Road. I split it into two.
So this one is alt and dry, and then this one is W sticks. Okay. Letter yeah. is over here, and they want to extend it for a year. The expiration date is October 10th. And same thing with the estate. Okay. Extension for a year, expiration October 10th. Matt, uh, 44 Alton Drive. Extension permit. Recommend yep. a three year extension. They're only looking for a one year. Uh, I'd give them a three. Because that's that's a uh, you got a house and then you've got a subdivision that's attached behind it. That's that subdivision that's down the hill. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion that we extend the order of conditions for three years to 44 Alton Drive. Second. The motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Post. Motion carries. We have to sign that one too. That one doesn't need a signature either. This one? N no. The extension needs an extension. The extension needs a signature. Oh. Yes. It's an extremely confusing form. Because they, they changed the forms in 2020. Okay. It is there. It's okay. Yeah, they changed the forms in 2020 and they made them even more confusing. Even more confusing. Yay. I know. So it's like the signature page used to stand out. Now it blends in yeah, with now the, rest it's in of the, the back. form. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Take mine. All right, someone stole mine. Sure. No, I got my own. You have an extra copy of the agenda? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, now I need a request for Dudley Estates. Same thing. You recommend we extend that for three years also, Matt? Because I think that's tied to the same. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I would, I would like to make a motion that we grant an extension for three years to the order of conditions for Dudley Estates on Jesse Road. Second. Motions been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now, I have a, a, another certificate of compliance that um, I didn't have the benefit of letting to know about because I just got it this afternoon. Um, a lawyer contacted me directly. It was for um, 50 Fairview Avenue. <coughs> it was for construction. That was like a rebuild on a house out there. Uh, I remember it. It was one of my first projects. It was like 2001 <laughs> when I started. Um, very old order. Uh, just, I took the liberty of just saving everybody some labor, and I typed up the certificate. Okay. Um, because, like I said, it came in late this afternoon. So... If you guys wouldn't mind. Okay. I'm sorry too. I just didn't want to dump that on you okay. at like you know, quarter of four in the afternoon. You know what I mean? So it's a certificate of compliance for what? For Fifty, 50 Fairview. Fifty Fairview Ave. This one. The order is older than the order is older than my youngest son. Yeah. <laughs> 
I make a motion we grant a certificate of compliance for 50 Fairview Avenue. Motion's been made. I don't hear a second. Hear a second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, notice of intent for 183 West Main Street, Gentex Optics. That's what we were waiting for, was the DEP number. That my name's on Okay, this was, they were waiting for a DEP number. Have we got a DEP number? Yes, we do. Somebody want to make a request on this? What? This one, it does have a, a DUP number with no comment. It was the tank installation proposal for the buffers on the riverfront area. Okay. And it's in a previously developed area, so state had no qualms with it. We were going to approve it last time, except right. that there, there yeah, was no DUP, DUP number. number. Right. Yeah. 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 Is it a motion for a notice of intent? Uh, yes. I make a motion for notice of intent for 183 West Main Street, Gentex Optics. Second. And we'll have a signature page. Oh. Like I said, change of form. Great, <laughs> great clarification. What they were trying to do, like on the certificate of compliance that I just sent you guys around, is the like the orders and conditions. They left like a page with just lines on it so that you could fill in everybody's name typed in. And they were doing that in 2020 in anticipation of maybe having to continue to do docu signs, which I never did with any of my other commissions anyway because the registry was inconsistent with it. Is this a VR form? No, I don't have it. Unless I'm looking at the wrong page, but that's the last page of the form three notice of That's the applicant, though. No. What you want is the, the cover page that we signed. Okay, so for that, you have to generate the WPA Form 5. Oh, okay. That's the Notice of Intent now. Right. Yeah. yeah. So All this right. needs a Form 5? Yeah. Yep. So it's approved. Just after you can approve it. She can just, you know, write up the order after and yep. you know, the save it for signature later. Well, I'm just, yeah. yep. Okay, next is... Six Mill Road. Come on down. How are we doing? Good. How are you? Good. So, um, just a simple septic repair. Yes, state your name, please. Pete Engel, McClure Engineering. Thank you. Yep. Um, simple septic repair outside the 50 foot buffer within the 100 foot buffer um, for a failed, failed system on a lot that has a intermittent stream kind of going behind it and mm -hmm. into a surface drain on one of the property lines. So, trying to maintain that 50 foot buffer as required by Title V. And um, existing lawn area, so it'll be restored to lawn. Any 
any questions from the board? It's an existing system, right? It's just going to be repaired. Yeah. It's a repair. Uh, are there any abutters present? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing at 621. Negative determination on this one. Okay. It qualifies. I, hmm? I make a it motion qualifies. for a negative determination of applicability for 6 Mill Road. Second. Back. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. You do intend to? Basically the same thing same on 10. Thing. Okay. And maybe we got a twofer from you guys, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I did the one next door a year ago, so. <laughs> so I make a recommendation for a negative determination of applicability for 10 Mill Road. Second. A motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, thanks in advance, by the way, for you guys sending me the PDFs. Yep, always. I appreciate it. And on behalf of the town of Dudley, I'm sorry that we gave you such a hard time. <laughs> nice meeting. I know, huh? I know the <laughs> approval was hard. <laughs> so make sure you tell your client how much you sweated it out. <laughs> Boards around. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, good Thank argument. You. <laughs> we need the signature page for this one, too. We need signature pages for those two, also. So that would be for number. Six and ten. Number no, six bro. and number ten. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Right. See you later, we'll Peter. We'll be back. So we need signature pages. Okay. Um, continuation for a notice of intent for 52 Center Road. What's going on with that? Glenn's right here. Glenn's right here. <laughs> Glenn, you got perfect timing. Oh, Come on down. You see, as I just had Smile. a flat tire and I had to borrow a car to get here, so I'm glad I, I had to do it. Perfect timing. <laughs> Those demons don't carry a spare. What timing? Mr. Chairman, I prepared myself well for the hearing with my patented smile. Matt, did you? Uh, yeah. Matt, did, I haven't no had a chance here, to look right? them over. Did you get my? I did. Send I did get your email. I haven't had a chance to look it over. I believe I forwarded it to two as well, but it was late in the afternoon. I don't know if you were able to print. Thank that. you. Okay, I'm going to open the public hearing at 624. Uh, can, should be in front of a mic, or can I just talk loud while I'm putting this on the board? You can talk loud. Okay. I'm pretty sure we the, can hear uh, it. The DP had a question about the replication area and making sure that within two years it would have 75% uh, surface area covered with indigenous. So what I sent Matt, Matt today was... The recent one, I, <coughs> I just finished one today, 2,300 square feet over at uh, 120, who cares, in Sturbridge. Hydric soils within 12 inches of the surface and 75%, uh, the one at Diamond Chevrolet is what the example that I sent to you again, built in 18, you couldn't walk through it, it's that thick. So we get into hydric soils, it's the law. As of March 2002, wetland replication protocol, EP requires, and that's what I finished up to help. Well, they, they say they require it, but they don't always see it. So what I did do was test pits in the uh, replication area, proving that I would have hydric soils within 12 inches of the final surface. And I, I know the neighbors are here, so I don't want to, will this be okay? Can I move back like this? can't see it on TV anyway. Maybe that way you guys yeah. see some of it? Hang on. Is that good? No? No. No. We're on TV. Oh, okay. Where do you want it? Where? Where? Where, just where, 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 where is that? Oh, like I see now. Right here? No. Oh, I think in the middle. I see I'm moving it. I, I thought I just moved. Yeah, you did. It's a little. Really it's a, where do you want it? Have it face the, uh, the table more so he can focus the camera in on it. That's why yeah, he wants it moved. Yep. Yeah. That way? The camera's right there. Oh, okay. Good. Good? Are we good? Uh, Fred? Let's see if you can get it. <laughs> a little delay over it's there. A, yes, it's yeah, a, it's in a case slight you delay. you swear or something, it's a delay? Is that yeah. Reason? I'm not sure. Oh, good, thank you. 
say something offensive. So uh, what I did do was, um, over on the right hand corner, you now have a replicate, test pit replication one, test pit replication two. These are uh, test pits I performed in the replication area, showing the dominant matrix from the A horizon, which is your topsoil, the B1, the subsoil, B2, B3, which will give you the uh, hydric soils as we come into them on test pit one at 14 to 16 inches, this 10YR43 with over 30% read offset, just iron staining, showing the water tables up there. The staining color is on there, 7.5YR42. Excuse me, Glenn, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Is that an extra copy of the plan? Yeah, two copies for you. Yeah, okay, well, well here you go. Yeah. Well, for the commission, there's two. Thank you. Right. You guys can pass one around to me. Yeah. I have one on my computer. I figured if you guys wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the replication area <clears throat> is one and a half times what the loss is. It's 520 square feet. And the lost area pointed out up here is 346. It's where the bridge is. It's where you cross over the wetland. We do see that the cart path after the wetland, I did walk with Matt, and one of the members, it was, it's evident that it had been there. So it appears that the original farmer crossed, just crossed through the wetland and continued on. So uh, Mr. Renucci, which is in Coventry on some site that just now, he says that he doesn't make it. I don't want him in here, of course. But uh, we, so he picked up the old cot road. There's no push to the left-hand side, right-hand side, there's gravel there. It, there's no evidence of stump movement loom, anything, it, it, if we walk it again, the car road, would, at least in this location, was here. So I asked them what, what was going on at the wetland, and it just appears the original farmer might have just went through the wetland. Mm -hmm. But he put the bridge in. It's, he did it in violation. Obviously, uh, it wasn't there before. What we're proposing to do is replicate one and a half times of what we lost. We did walk the wetland line couple of things that the commission, uh, Matt and the commissioner wanted during that site inspection is the pig area, which is up if you recall, the existing storage container, it's just above what you're seeing there. Oh, I'm in the way, I get it. Now I move. So just as we go up the plan some, <coughs> you'll see the existing, it's a uh, a milk truck body, possibly. One of the neighbors did ask, hey, where's that, the body? So we, we made sure to put that body on the plan and we moved that body out of a runoff, comes off the hill, intermittent runoff, and the pig corralling area was in that runoff. And then it eventually would have ran into the wetland, so we moved the we moved the structure out of there and also talked about the crowd, the crowding area for the pigs to get out of that wetland. So, um, we also, the commission members, or the member at the time, along with Matt, the cart road going to that pig area was roomy. And so they asked, similar to the other cart roads that had had crushed stone put on them, accessing the barn nearest the road. Here's the road, as we're over here, this barn. Make sure this cot path is now, gra it is gravel. I'm sorry, here we are, where is this cot path? There's that other barn. There's the other barn, I'm sorry. So here's the main road, here's the other barn. The cot road over here, this does have a gravel surface. This gravel surface here, <coughs> proposed to gravel surface that road to ensure that it's stable. That's the, that would be the access route, route to the, again, new position for the pigs. So on the plan, as we discussed before, there was the original violation barn, and then there was another violation barn, which is this one. This one. bearing again, which is 113 feet from the wetland, so that is just outside that 100 foot buffer jurisdiction, but 
and that's something to deal with with the building inspector I believe and not so much the conservation on the over 100 feet away outside the buffer we plan on uh, again the replication area if, the, if it is permitted we would immediately do the replication area or rough it out for this year salvage the topsoil remove the subsoil, get back down approximately a foot to a foot and a half to match the elevation of the existing adjacent wetland. So basically, you have the existing wetland, the land rises up, and we're taking that land down to match the elevation of the existing wetland. We, what we do do is go one foot below the elevation of the existing wetland, back to what organic to the elevation of the existing wetland. Uh, so uh, attaining the hydrology that's driving the existing wetland we will now have under the replication area, which is presently upper because it's higher. But once we take it down, then we access that. And that's what the test pits are showing. We're uh, right adjacent to a well, and we're just taking that land down. And it, it, it's basically gaining access to hydrology, which drives the wetland to grow. And that's why I did the test pits to show that we grow access to hydrology. That, that's what the colors of the soils are describing. The 10YR43 with redox, Normally it has to be over 10%. We're at 30 to 40. It's pretty very uh, iron staining if you've seen it before. The picks. And then the other the, the other pest could actually goes down to 4-2, which is uh, even lower chroma. This side of the house. Yep. Okay. So th that's that's the proposal is to um, restore that area and or should I say replicate the area? And I think believe DP We'll send this over to her also, just to show that we, well, uh, our main evidence to you is that within two growing seasons, we have 75% of the surface area covered with indigenous wetland plant species that would have been found in the lost area. So we're, we're growing similarly the same brush, the high bush blueberry, the winterberry, the arrowwood, we're seeding it out with a New England wet mix that comes out of Hadley, New England wetland plant at a density of six to seven foot spacing, and that's a standard spacing. Some people go seven or eight, but we normally are in that six to seven foot spacing for each plant on center, <coughs> and then the herbaceous layer comes up in between. Speckled dowder, I might have in this one. I recently have been switching a little bit more to speckled dowder, which, which is also a nitrogen fixer. It's up in your replication detail over on the upper left-hand corner. So on this one, it's high bush blueberry, northern arrow with common winterberry, cinnamon fir, and red maple, and then the seeding. Hmm? I'm just looking at the spacing that I would say the last there and let everybody <coughs> ask questions that might be on later. Oh, yeah. Spacing, please, give me the spacing. Contracting. Uh, it, it switches up every now and that's why I just wanted to be sure that I did give you the spacing in here. Uh, we actually have the number of species according to the spacing. There's a formula that New England Wetland Plant gives you. If you have X amount of surface area, you just plug in this number 0.002 at seven, multiply it times the area, it'll give you the number of plants at that spacing. And that's how we figure that out. It's a regular just formula. Glenn, where did they move the pig pen? They moved it <coughs> still in somewhat <coughs> level. Right here, here it is on the plan. There it was down in that, right next to the flow path, as we're going to it, and we moved it, and it says new storage container location. Wasn't there a brook going right through it? It was in, the, that was a flow path from runoff, and it was right on the right-hand side, but it wasn't hydric soil, it was just a flow path. So we moved it up 25 feet out of that brook, okay. out of that intermittent flow path. It wasn't an intermittent stream. We didn't want to put it up into the hill. So it, it was right up here. Right. Right, it so it, was, it is here, and we moved it up the hill, and it was this flow path. Yeah, when a friend and I were on there, we had asked them to move it because basically the flow path channel stream, yep. whatever you want to call it, was going right, right through it through the pig pen. And it's like, I, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, Glenn, we can't. And he's like, yeah, you're right, so we'll move it. So I said, nice pig pen, move it. He did. Right, we'll have to use some forklift truck or a crane or whatever they have to do but because it doesn't have wheels but we'll pick it up and move it over you know we'll have to call it a pig enclosure because every time I say pig pen I think of my Swine. kids rooms <laughs> no it hasn't been moved no 
Well, according to the plan, it says new it says storage. New, site. Container new storage. Location. That's all it means. Is that will be the new okay. storage oh, lo okay. container it location? It means proposed. No, I, it's it's a, it's a fair question. He should have yeah. used the it's word. It's a fair proposed, question. But yeah. Instead, he said new storage. We haven't done anything more since the commission gave us the enforcement order. Well. From what I know, he hasn't done anything more because it was an enforcement order and then it was a new building, but the building, some, by chance, happened to be 100. We're working on that retro stuff with the building, building inspector. Building inspector, yeah. right. So, uh, yeah, Mr. Burlingame I, and I are involved in that together. So. I've been <laughs> adamant to him to do nothing, not even crush stone, loom, mulch. We remember the last meeting. We, we, we know what enforcement orders are about. They mean do nothing. And uh, I don't have an excuse for this gentleman. <coughs> he, uh, well, I he does, he, Glenn, he, you know no, what I, I understand? Yes, if I could. I just came back from guys out of Georgia that are doing the site. They're going, are you kidding? What is all, this is in the one in Sturbridge. You know, these people, that, well, not these people, sorry about that. The people that don't have the Massachusetts Weather Protection Act in their pocket, like we do, Sometimes just think, what are you talking about? That's what this Georgia Arco out of Georgia that's building the building in Sturbridge. What are you crazy? What are you? I, I, whatever. I just had the railroad. I, please, if you indulge me, the railroad just went onto my two hundred eighty-two thousand square foot building project, three hundred ten acres in Oxford, next to the Chimney Pond, and ripped two dams, colonial dams, short ones, up and threw it in the wetland. And what did I call those? No offense to Kentucky people. I, I, I says to them directly. Because who, who would do this? Go on somebody else's land. But there's a law called preemption that, that allows the railroad to do things above and beyond what you would think. In fact, well, who cares about that? But they took it, and I said, it must be a Kentucky redneck that did that. Meaning, again, that when you have no laws wherever you're from, wetlands are nothing. And that's all. We do have the second strongest wetland law. At one point, about 10 years ago, it came out in the country. Yeah. So Kentucky and Georgia essentially go by the federal regulation. Yeah, but you also do a lot of things that just, you do things. They, they, so there's no good excuse, but he is out of Florida. That's no excuse either, but they, 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 he, people sometimes, even in 21, don't know our law, or even people from Mass don't know the law. I got other people with violations, they're still clueless, too. Okay. Any questions from the board members? So he's, he's so they're working on all the other issues that were raised by this. What's the uh, proposed time frame on? We're, we're still a good time away from frost. We would replicate, do the wetland replication in New England wetland plants. One thing that, that, that just came up by some other, uh, uh, another board Monday was, oh, don't plant now. New England wetland plant still sells them right on, almost up into frost till November, uh, mid-November. But the point is, is that what happens with the root systems with all the chlorophyll, the summertime, your roots then, if you have house plants and you put them outside, you know how they get really lush, and you put them inside in the winter. The same thing happens with trees or bushes or any, they end up absorbing that chlorophyll, and they make sugars, they, they get stored in the root system. The root systems are actually more healthy right now at the end of the season because it's been stored. And so we plant right into the late fall, and, 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 and all my replications that I've probably done about, I don't know, four or five this season, but I've done that many over the years. I started in 86, and we don't have any problem with planting late. So if New England wetland plants, you send a pickup truck up there, you pick up your root stock, 98% of what we plant, we're in just like the thing today, we just finished planting, like I said. We have, uh, and then if they didn't live, just per se, we have to replace them. We have to show you that all four of these, four of that, whatever we're saying, is there in two years, and, and I wouldn't, and most commissions will not sign off for at least those two growing seasons. So we would have all next year and then the year after that we would have to show that these things are growing, that we met the 75%. Uh, if he's going somewhere and decides to sell it, it was on the market, this thing could hold him up on sales potentially, or there'd be a hold back on the, you know, from the, the buyer if there was something like that, uh, 4,000, whatever it might be, in order for them to be comfortable that if there was a fault, and for the bank to be comfortable if there was a fault, a default, and, they, and it didn't work, that they have enough money to go back and do something else. That, that's the hold back. Because we, we have a few projects, one just recently on Stafford Street, that had a hold back. And uh, there was one on Kingsbury over here with Webster, a hold back. And lastly, at Peter Amarillo, I just closed out two weeks ago in, in Webster that had a, had a hold back. 
Excuse me, Glenn. <coughs> I'm just I'm I'm re-reviewing your planting plan here, and yeah, I do like the six feet off center spacing. It's tighter. Uh, it it is tighter. I mean, I don't see any trees on here, which I red maple. There's, it, the red maple's at the top. I don't see it. Of course, it's the computer, so I can't wear my glasses. I don't have a tool. Uh, under the application, four red maple, four high bush blueberry, four northern arrow, with four common winterberry, and four cinnamon fir in that six foot spacing. There it is. Okay, can red we plant the leaf. red maples? The red maples are like 10 feet off center. Well, when we're planting this, they're not all in one place. I just put three, okay. three and a half inch calories. So they're not going to be near each other, they're going to be spread out. Why do you say that? Because it was a landscaper that designed the replication that we just finished at 2300, and he had things in clusters, and I called the kid, he was out of Harvard. Quinn, the kid, Doolittle is the name, but I says, yeah, who designed this? You got a, a bunch of Lindera here and a bunch of, he goes, no, we put, we, we space them like you would naturally have in a wetland, where you have winter berry and a high bush. Everything is spaced out. And, uh, and mixed. And a mix. Yeah, your shrub spacing looks mixed. good. I would just and didn't so really, it wasn't clear on the tree spacing. Because that's what a natural wetland looks like. It doesn't look like everything went here and everything like over spacing. there. I mean, sometimes you might get a yeah, cluster, no, but generally, generally we design have a myself. I do it in a triangular or a square grid pattern. Basic, Any other questions from the board? The calculator is what he's using. Yeah. No, I'm I'm fine with it. I, I'm on that area. I like the choice of the red maple. You know, it'll take well. Um, nice thing about red maples is that they're, I guess, the kindest way I could put it is they're prolific reproducers. They'll start spreading around fast. And you know, and you know, if I could switch, the only thing I'll say about that, when they brought the red maples to my site yesterday, they were all. He goes, you know, they're Acerupa, yeah, variety, scarlet. I saw the leaf. I'm going, no. We make sure even on the high bush blueberry, no hybrids. It all has to be native. It, the only thing we plant. Those, those bushes went back to Harvard. I went over quickly to Oxford, to Arello Corp, who has a stockpile at my brother's place. Yep. And we ended up picking stuff, send a truck there from Sturbridge, and we got the stuff back in right away. So again, nothing non-native, no hybrid, no variety. It has to, Delar is a native, uh, indigenous to the wetland plant, the wetland <coughs> community mm -hmm. is what the clause reads. So sure. we, we only plant the stuff that we found in that swamp that we worked in. A, a butters? Please come up and state your name. Uh, Leonard Wheelock, uh, 42 Center Road. Uh, I got a question. Yeah. Now you're saying that this road here was already there. This this portion is clear that we, when we went out, we walked it. Right. And it, it it's not cut. It's got natural grasses right up to the edge. There's no evidence of push or tree cutting down. Yeah, but this, if you come down, he came in, he had somebody come in with a bobcat. Yeah. To make this road, he made it all the way through here, and he pushed some of the dirt onto the stone wall. I got a picture of the dirt on the stone wall over here. Then he had somebody come in and push the pea stone all the way down. It says the, crushed stone surface now. Right. I'm just looking. We, this is where we walked, and we were pointing out that there was, there's no tree stumps, there's nothing cut, there's no evidence of push here. But he did put pea stone in this flow path. It's not on hydric soil. We we augured the soil. Yeah, but what I'm saying, he pushed the dirt onto the stone wall. Well, that that's not part of a violation in wetlands. The stone wall itself is not a uh, yeah, not a wetland. The dirt came from this from here. From this here. And you know what I'm saying? I, all I did was when I walked the site with the commission, I showed them what the evidence was on the right and left hand side of that cart road, and I. I flag wetlands by the week, and we didn't see any stumps or cut trees. You know, you'd normally look for something pushed right there on either side, or anything cut or a stump aside. There, there's no evidence of those stumpages. And so it appeared that it was an original cart path. Not that he didn't put crushed stone on it, and not that he might have not pushed or put something with a bobcat, but it's, that is not, that's not a wetland down at that stone wall at that location, and I know that push that you're talking about, but this appears to be that had been there. That, okay, I'll say it, it and all, all indications are that that cart road was there from not having, even the grasses that come down to the edge of it, there, the grasses are native, the, the, uh, in fact, it was uh, Carex pentavonica, which is an upland Carex, who's come right down to the edge. We could walk it again if need be. I'm not, I'm, 
more than willing to walk it, but whether it makes any difference whether that cart path was there, I'm not sure. But this upland cart path is in the upland. Yes, and he violated the wetland by putting, by raising it up, putting boulders and putting a bridge in. That's all violation. I'm not arguing that point. But, but you can solve a violation if you ask to solve it under 1055-4B1-7, 310-CMR, the attorney. It's, um, it, it says, may I fill something up to 5,000 square feet and replicate it? And that's the clause we're using. We're not using limited project clause, 310 CMR 10.533E, which says I never had access to that back property, so give me, give me an access. Because I even wrote that in my description. Because technically, sure, there was an access that he could have gone like this and come around over here. But he did it, and he's, but he's at a small square footage. He's well under the 5,000, which is a threshold under that 1055 clause, 4B1 through 7. And the one through seven is how you make a wetland. So if you fill the wetland under 1055-4B, the one through seven tells you how you make up, how to make it back. It has to be near the lost wetland, has to be in the hydrology, has to be connected to the, the wetland that you lost. So all those points of one through seven, we meet by putting it right here into hydrology, same plant species, and that's what, and that's what we did. So we're asking under that clause, may we replicate over there one and a half times what we lost. I augured the entire site, probably 40, 50, well, McKinney don't even have to say how many. They're right here. All these soil augering, augering, augering pits here are, uh, let's see, what do we have? We have 22, there's uh, 22 plus 16. Whatever, if I rounded that, right? That's almost 40. What, 38? Yeah. 38, yeah, 38. There's 38 soil borings that I did to prove my wetland line. And that's what I always do, because when soils came in in 95, it was actually a curse to me at first, but eight years at UNH just on soils, it was a blessing, because soils are more accurate than plants. Under the state law, you can use soils in, if you have hydric soils within 12 inches of the soil surface or a bottom of an O horizon, if there is an O, an O is an organic layer. But most of the time in plowed areas, you don't have an O horizon, only in deeper swamps where you get that muck and then some soil. So anyways, I augured the site uh, to prove my wetland line, both in the field. Oh, another thing, we're abandoning any use of this field and restoring it where we are in wetlands because I wasn't gonna go through the problem up here if you, That looks like me. <laughs> so anyways, at the top of the, yeah, right? At the top of uh, the field, at the top of the wetland, there is wetland within the field. There's a, there it is, right there. That area, correct, is a, um, is a, he was using it as field. It doesn't grow that weed too well. The, just like corn, when you grow it in a wetland, it's subdued if you ever go into agricultural fields where a farmer, McGill's, I got a few cases, but, so anyways, uh, so we're abandoning 3,341 square feet will be restored with seed back into a meadow, no farming in wetlands. Not that that's the major deal, but it is a deal that we don't have to then ask for uh, another allowance. Get out of the wetland, take those little mounds he has in there, smooth that out, erosion control, and seed it back with wet meadow seed mix, the same stuff we're using within the wetland replication, and get out of the get out of the wetland altogether, and no more field in the wetland. Even if the original farmer, whoever that might have been, had some, and that was an edge of a field, we're not going to we're not going to go for anything uh, that would make it any harder to get a permit. And, and, and there is a clause in the law that allows for new agriculture up to 5,000 square feet. That's not original ag agriculture that's been going on for five years or a farmer. Uh, that, that as long as the farmer field, I just did one from 1926, there was farm on Fisher Dick Road and where. And uh, as long as it's continually in operation, you can keep farming in a, in a wetland as long as you sell a commodity. You have to prove with slips, all that baloney. I went through the whole thing. And the point is, is this hasn't been a continuous farm, as, as what I hear. So there was, we weren't even looking at using it as, uh, 
grandfathered as a historic farm because there's no evidence of slips being sold for the last five years. Maybe it was used for corn or silage. But so we would have then gone, we had to go into new agriculture, and new agriculture still only allows for 5,000 square feet. So we could have asked for that, but if it's not productive, and it's also a, another stickler point, then just get out of the wetland altogether. So, Glenn, let me just ask you really quick. Um, the area that you're, um, is not going to be farmed is going to be restored to meadow. Meadow. Is that in writing? Yes. Narrative. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is. Um, remove permanently two upgrading of wetland. Let's see. Wetland disturbance. All agricultural field activities shall be removed permanently to upgrading of wetlands. All right. Is it in, it in my project description, the last one I did when we modified this plan, I gave you a description of turning, uh, leveling the, um, the furrows that he still has in here. It's very small. It, it's uh, three or four furrows going back, and then there's a length. No, I see it now. Okay. Uh, now, is this in, like, has he filed a conservation plan with NRCS? We don't, because, no, be, because if we were in the wetland, I t uh, talked to, uh, to a Holden, a few gentlemen up there, and I still recommended that he go through a farm bureau and get a farm plan, but m only because if we're in wetlands, then there is actually a little bit more allowance if you've got a farm plan, but we just got out of the wetland altogether. Okay, well, so he, we, I, the area that you've identified for being taken out of agriculture. Yes, sir. Um, my recommendation, if you guys decide you're gonna approve an order of conditions, that that area be noted on the order and that it be made a perpetual condition that if he decides he wants to reconvert it, he has to come back in for another NOI. Because he's, it's being singled out as being left fallow. So it wouldn't be considered part of the agricultural operation. The rest of the area that he's performing agriculture in would be exempt at that point after he fulfills his order. Okay. Makes sense. Um, I do like the way you've got your replication spacing out here. It makes sense. We sometimes, if I could through the chairman, you'll see a, sometimes you'll see the replication and you'll actually, I'm doing one in Upton where it's a, a Ma Margaret Bacon, I don't know if she ever comes in front of you, but she's a, an engineer out of that Douglas area. She actually shows each plant like in there similar to this one that was a landscape, which shows the landscape plan. We just described, here's the area, it's a small area, and here's how many plants we put in. I oversee the whole thing. So, just like the last three days of last week and the first two days this week, that's how long it took to actually dig it, massive excavator, big cleanup bucket, take the whole thing down, hydrox, shooting grades all through it, all the way along, because it was a gradation. I, I don't allow the thing to be any higher than what I, I, I spec out on the original wetland. If you look at my, grade stake on the replication. I set a grade stake out in the wetland saying this is the final grade and that's the grade that we attained through the, on this one it's so small, through that flat wetland. Uh, but I, I just finished one about four weeks ago in Sturbridge on lead mine and the contractor, I says here's the, here's the stake, follow that, I can't be here, I go back and the thing goes up like this. He had to come back on a Sunday for me to go over it. He wasn't happy. Then I think within a few days we had the excavator back, lowered the whole thing down where I told him to be. Because if you get too high, you're going to start growing upland plants because you're going to get away from that water table. So we're specific that we're, with that grade stake that I'm putting, that this thing is not, is not higher than what I say right there. And we shoot it with the late, as the one we just did. It was all, the bottom was lasered all the way across it on a gradation because it was graded like this came down a hill and the wetland was on a hill. So we shot a point out here, we shot a point halfway to between, and we shot a point here. And now that guy from Beauregard Construction, one of the big boys, they were, um, we did the grades all the way down to match them to coming down so we matched the existing wetland over here. And they actually lowered it even more. To, I said, I leave there Friday, I come back Monday, and one corner was still high. I goes, no. Get it out, get the machine, take it down, because we, as you get higher, you can get drier and then you start growing upland, as Matt knows. You have to be within 12 inches of that hydric soil and that water table. Under the state law on delineating wetlands, and the last thing, if I could, and then of course they might have a question, is uh, if you're 
under the state reg, which is delineating wetlands DP, the old book. 95 one. Yep. We've got them. And uh, you can Google on it. But, but a, a hydric a wetland is actually, if you're arguing soil, and if you don't hit hydric soil within 12 inches, it's an upland. So in other words, so you have to have hydric soils within 12 inches of the surface. That's why we, most people have 12 inch organic in, uh, that we put in these, but at the bottom, there has to be hydric soil there. We just did one at Diamond that was done, no offense to Ecotec, back in 11, and it had 10 to 12 inches below the 12 inch organic. That was 10YR4 format. It was growing upland. They never got to a water table. 2,000 out of 3,800 was not wetland. And we proved it through Margaret Washburn and everybody else, because she was the agent. But the, if you don't have that hydric soil at the bottom of that 12, you don't have hydrology to drive a well. You can't have a, f a few inches even of a 10 y 4 which is a bright red, which is non-hydric soil, if we went into the whole reduction part of that. Okay. Iron gets, this, uh, gets reduced in, high, in groundwater table, low oxygen, and it, gets, and it takes away that red color the four, four, four value, four chroma, and we'll draw and pull that iron away, change it from Fe plus three to Fe plus two, and then it, it that, so it gets reduced through microbes, through uh, greater than biological to zero, zero temperature, takes the iron away, leaves your soils grays and white. So what we're looking for when we auger down is three, two, and one chroma with a four value, which means to you only that when you're digging in the soil and you hit that gray stuff, or that grayer color and not that redder color that's normally in your topsoil, you dig in, you've seen it, that, that's hydric soil. And it, it's cut and dry, it's just the stuff that we always have to look for. And what does the developer want? He wants the red stuff, the four, six, of course, because that's upland, and, and the stuff he doesn't want is the low chroma, four, three, four, two, and that's gray and that's wet, and that's it. Next. Um. Good evening, Paul Wheelock, 28th Center Road. Uh, my question is, is there someone under contract or will be under contract to do this kind of reclamation work, uh, I, planting the trees and shrubs? And he's doing it. I, 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 we've already, when I design these things, nobody else comes in. I, you know, he hates to give all examples of stuff. I'm on Thompson Pond 10, 15 years ago. I've done these before the contractor. I come back and I got a pond. Nobody oversees my replication wetlands but me, and I already talked to Renucci. He I thought understand I was all, all that. I understand all that. I landscaped for 35 years. Yes, sir. Not everybody can plant a three to five foot caliper red maple. That's a big tree. Well, no. We're generally, in this case, the stuff we were doing today, that was three inch, cal three, three inch DBH. So we're up here. We're, we're stuff like this. Yeah, we're planting. These well, things are tied down. These we're not calling. This is a bigger site than one we did today. Glenn, we're not I asking think his for question those. is who who is the subcontractor that you're going to use to do the actual work here on site? He he says he has a mini. If he doesn't, I'll use Lemansky or I'll use Hadad or these other people that I have minis. I oversee them though. The whole thing gets overseen because otherwise you'll not. If it doesn't get done right, the commission through a request for certificate of compliance will not sign off. So the thing, just like Sturbridge today, has to be by the book so that it can, within two growing season, meet the criteria of hydric soils within 12 inches, the plant species, the 75%, which normally... I, I, under, okay, I understand so all I, that okay, stuff. I just want to make sure that the, the people that do the work, uh, is there, say, a, a, a licensing to do, the, no. to do this kind of work, or is it there's certification? No, there's or? no formal licensing or certification to do this kind of work. Okay, I, just I checking. Know. I mean, I know a bunch of people that have gotten into the, I guess, niche market of doing this in restoration work now. Yep. Um, if Mr. Renucci is going to um, do a do it a DYI, um, Glenn has already basically stated he's going to be on site regardless of who does it. Okay. I, I, we we would not. Um, he was told this two days ago when he thought he was going to be done with me because his, after he pays my bill. Good luck with that. <laughs> I, believe me, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. the thing actually blew up is the term we talked about because we know that there became you know, the neighbors and plus um, the new barn and more delineation and plus he took out, which the attorney knew about, additional of my soil flags that were in this field pot up here when he wanted to plant it last year, right up in here. We had soil augered all of that and then I came back to a week, about, I think it was a week and a half to two weeks later, it was right in the growing season and all my soil 
my sticks in the hole with the soil descriptions were gone. And uh, he says, well, I, I had a plan. And he really didn't realize what the importance of those soil borings were because then I had to go back and do that whole area again. So there was more work, but that's not your problem. I did more work. I already told you that I didn't know what he was doing there and I walked away from the job. You knew that, I, I didn't stay there. I saw the stuff growing when I came back and I'm going, and then we checked Galvin's office and he wasn't listed as a grower. So we, we thought this was baloney, but in the end it's because it's a, not with marijuana, it's right. industrial marijuana that it's an agricultural crop, so it is, a le it is legal. We didn't know that last year and that delayed this thing to get in front of you and you a long time because once I walked away from it, I, 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 uh, it took me a while to get back. I'm running presently right now, who cares? I know you don't, but 60 projects. And so I did finally finish it up. And I'm glad there was some patience. I, we also kept saying that there was no erosion going into other wetlands downstream. So sometimes under enforcement and restoration, they should happen quicker. I ran into a glitch with not knowing, and then I, then I finally, we, we got back to it. It's, once it's, it's, it's all okay. good. It's all good, Glenn, in the end. Well, it, it, I, if wetlands would continue to be degraded, downgrading, th that would have been another reason to, I've got one of those on Greenville Pond in Leicester, and the commission's ready to send it to Cotton Pick and DEP, because when, and I just got called in, if you don't pay attention, then and you don't pay attention, you don't pay attention, you go to court or you go to DEP. The commission might, I'm just saying. In Sturbridge, you go to court right away. They don't play. I was in front of them last night. So anyways, here we are and we, we, we appreciate your indulgence that, on this one and we will uh, move the shed out of the corralling at, the, at that area and replicate the wetlands if we get a permit and keep them out of that field that's a wetland. That portion of the field that's a wetland. Excuse me. Is there a time limit on um, two years? Sorry, uh, two years. Or is it two years to move that? Uh, could I, could I say through the chairman? Yes, through the chairman. I, we, my insistence is to do the replication this fall, whether or not it gets, and and then we serve we on the surface we seed it out. It's flat. There's no overland flow in that area, so I'm not worried about the total stability. It's so small in, in the area we're on, there's no hill riding, running through it like a, what, where we would maybe have erosion of that topsoil. We're using, um, and the soil we're using is out of Oxford, it's 80% organic. It's, it's actually, uh, it's a really rich black stuff. So we'll, it stays still, we will seed it out. If we don't get a lot of growth, it's not gonna erode away because it is flat. And we are protecting it with a, a wattles around it also. So, but we do have, up to three years on the order, but the commission can require through the order that it be done whatever time you gave it, give us. If you told us within six months it has to be done, or by June it has to be done, or whatever you say, we're gonna have to do it. But I, my intention is to get it done right now. Ken Canty, 30 Center Road. Uh, I wanna thank Mr. Marrow for bringing up the point that I was gonna bring up about the uh, stipulation or uh, an agreement to uh, permanently not use that 3,000 square foot. Yes, sir. So the landowner will agree to that and he, he will. to it. He will, you, you put it in the order and we will. It, it, there's, he's got enough land, he's got land, if I could say, he's got land that he's not using. He's got plenty of, with the field stuff. Uh, it, it's too much, it's, um, there's no need for it that I see and he agrees and plus plants don't grow, these things don't grow well at all. If you. The other plants in the upland, or whatever they were when we walked it, they were up here. As you get into that wetter and wet, the plants are like this, if anything. It, they just, it's not a wetland plant. So most <coughs> back wet plants or facultative plants, which means wetland plants, fac facultative or fac wet, they grow in wetlands. We, well, I'm, the only thing I know about marijuana is it must not be a fac wet plant because that sucker don't, excuse me, that doesn't grow well in a wetland. The next question is for the uh, town consultant of uh, the commission, what oversight are you gonna conduct and how often are you gonna conduct that during the, pen, the, the course of this uh, reclamation? Um, I usually have a set inspection schedule. It depends on what phase he's in. It depends on where he's at in his phasing um, when he's doing his wetland replication. Go down a little bit more often than normal. 
Um, when the replication area is growing in, there's no need for me to sit there and watch it grow. So inspections would be relegated to, you know, spaced out to a month apart probably. Um, Glenn, you're raising your hand. Well, we're at your convenience, of course. Okay. Um, that's about it. I mean, well, I, I, asked I, have a, I have a standard schedule for inspections anyway. On, on I asked the question, given projects. his history of noncompliance with cease and desist orders and even housing court orders, where he's found in contempt. That's why, oh, the, the, I, think, the, that's the, why the, I think the reasoning behind the question be is some assiduous oversight in this situation by the town because Mr. Karvosky may be doing his job, but we can't depend on the landowner. Your point is well made and, and, and taken. Okay, and lastly, um, regarding the, uh, the stream you call intermittent, uh, I would suggest is perennial. Uh, I would like to see that reconsidered at some point <clears throat> because it makes a big difference as far as the, the buffer zone is concerned, 200 as opposed to 100. And that is a wetland, wildlife area. It's very important to that land trust. Area. Well, I looked at, if you look at the area that's actually on, under consideration on the USGS map, there's no perennial stream marked out. In fact, there's not even an intermittent stream marked out on that property. And as a result, under the Wetland Protection Act, if it's not marked on the USGS map, it's not perennial. Well, I know, Mr. Uh, Kravosky found uh, one with 0 0.0098 factor, right? Correct, if we can talk on that when you're done. Yeah, right. that's good. I mean, okay. that's, that's what this well, is about. I want to make well, sure that that is a safe area for that. If I, I'll go through the right. chairman. So under, under the reg, as of 12-2002, the revision of the riverfront reg, it came in in 96. If it shows up as intermittent on a USGS map, then it was presumed to be intimate. That was before 12-2002. After 12-2002, you're required to run stream status, USGS stream status, it's called. It's a computer program. We run them all the time on any stream, everywhere we are, because it's required. If there's a flow path, you're required to run it. If it reaches on the flow rate of 0.01 at a 99 percentile, it's a three-page document. It'll show you the drainage area contributing. It'll give you whether it's superficial geology, what, what type of, if it's gravel or till. And it goes into, and it, and the, again, it's the drainage area. And if you're at 0.01 at this 99 percentile, which is, you'll see a page with all these percentiles, then under the reg, under 310 CMR 10.58, it actually brings these exact figures out. At 0.01, at 99, and anything greater than that 0 0.01, 0 0.015, 0 0.2, point going up, that's, consi that's perennial and period. The only time then, then that you can claim that it's intermittent is if you have no withdrawal, diversion, or impoundment upstream, if you don't have those upstream, and the thing dries up for four, four days, not consecutive, in a 12-month period, and you photograph it. I'm doing one right now on, on L. Stevens, and we've done them over the years, but just very minute, we're redoing one. And anyways, it's over in Charlton, so anyways, if, uh, so we take the photos. Normally me, I put the newspaper down on the ground. If it's in Shrewsbury, I call the agent out because it also says competent source. And then on competent source, it says, technically the only competent sources are DEP and the conservation. So I did one on Slocum Meadow Brook a few years ago, Brad Stone, second engineer over there. Hey, Brad, come on out and look at it because we don't want any argument that this thing is intermittent as a competent source. So there's a bunch of safeguards in the regulation that make sure you're either perennial or intermittent. And when we run StreamStat 200 feet below our property, and that's in the, in the file, we ran it and it was .009. It just, it just didn't make it into the perennial category. And the law is the law. I, I've gone to court with, with Ernie Belaforti against, with this stuff against the CVS that's hey, now Reston. built in Webster. And because that thing didn't, it, it never dried up, the one coming out of the old CM State of Pond behind the old price chopper, we actually, I don't want to get into everything we argued on that point. In the end, Gorski backed out because he was being threatened and he caved in because he was the abutter. But who cares? I, he's my client now. The point is, you, you, you got to have, he went to law judge that that area in the back, even though it never dried up, most, I had freaking sponges on there that I had UMass come out. Those sponges only live in water that never dries up. We did the works. 
it wouldn't matter. If it doesn't meet 0.01 at 99 percentile, and it shows as intermittent, it's by law determined to be intermittent. I have trout brooks that don't, that are trout brooks that don't meet the criteria. They are still have no 200 foot zone. Chapin Brook in, in Leicester, I've got the Dolge Court Brook. I, I have one on Holyoke Range in, in uh, Amherst for a, a professor over there that I did. So again, you will not beat it in court if it doesn't make 0.01 at a 99 percentile showing up as intimate, period. Now, just to make sure through all the case law that we're quoting and alluding yeah. to, well, I, we're talking about the stream between Conant Pond and what was Wheelock Pond. The, the stream in the back of our property, exactly. And, 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 um, and even if it has drought in it, as I'm saying, if it doesn't make the law, then when you go to law court, when you go to judicatory hearing, they're all they're going to look at is here's the criteria. Did we here's the law? Did we make the law? Did it, it was it below 0 .01 or with, with a 99 percentile or was it a, above 0 .01? Well, I mean, and even, even really if you take a riverfront consideration into an agricultural conversion, uh, there really isn't much meat there. As far well, as I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to the you. other thing I'm I need to advise you of this whole perennial thing it just isn't there I, I understand Glenn the other thing I need to advise you of yes is sir. that this order is being issued under the state act only because the bylaw to, we cannot apply the bylaw on an agricultural conversion oh okay I get you oh, thank you Matt I didn't I wasn't aware of that so it, it must we need, be we need to we need to be written into your bylaw I didn't see that. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to help too with the with the conditions you know like I did with I, Carol because this is gonna be a complicated order so I'm gonna have to write up a special right. conditions template for it all right so that's all I have I just want to make sure that there's adequate oversight from the town fair enough Did, fair point gen generally last thing I know I talk very to it generally we're gonna ask you to come out and look at it when I put the erosion controls out before we do any work we're gonna ask you to come out after I replicate the wetlands just to show you and then it's gonna be growing and you know, whenever else you want to come out. Really, the two main points is that we have our erosion controls in and that they're going to protect the resource areas before we do any work. And, and, and then if you want to see the replication wetland, once it's cut and planted, we'll be sending photos in, just like the ones I took today for that one in Sturbridge. They go into the commission. but And then they can look at it at their convenience if they want. But I have photos of, um, I'll have photos of the hydric soils on the bottom, and I'll have photos of it planted. So that, and then, I'll, and then when, normally when I go for a certificate of compliance, I, I tell you, and I'll have stakes in the replication area, and there'll be, those stakes will say 10YR43 or 10YR42 at 12 or 13 inches, and, I'm just, and then you can check your own self if you, you want to check me. But that, that will say that, yes, I attain that hydric soil. Mm -hmm. Understood. Uh, one just quick question. How many pigs does he have? Three or four or five. Okay. The neighbors might know more than me. I just, I just want to recommend the, the proper containment because I don't care how well you replicate this wetland, yeah. one night out they'll destroy it. So, oh, yeah, they yeah. got a lot. I'm, I'm not they, sure how many there are, but if you get a half a dozen, they'll I, destroy I have, it in one night. I haven't so. seen them running around. A couple of a couple of big ones, and I see the babies. That's that's all I've seen. Yeah, babies. I, I, I just make sure that, he's, that your client has proper containment. Yeah. Because... Well, it's going to be new fences. How could you do it? It's going to, it's going to be destroyed in one night if it's not contained properly. They might like, not contained they might like that marijuana more than that stuff. I have well, no idea. You know, I, I'm, I'm only, but we will, um, we'll, we'll stress that. I point. would really make that we a point because it. isn't it hemp, not marijuana? Yeah, but it, it's all in the same family. But it's called hemp. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's got a bud on it. It looks just like marijuana, but it's it is hemp, and even marijuana is called hemp. It's yeah. it's all the same. It's a uh, it's similar. Well, if hemp just, gets too old, it starts to get too much THC. Which the hemp hat, this hemp hat, well, whatever they call it, they also call it industrial marijuana. Okay, for I've seen that sign too. Like but it, what it means, it has no THC. THC is too high to destroy the crops. It's growing up. It's the same. Yep. Mr. Wheelock, the pigs. Uh -oh. Yeah, they're all over the place. As a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> they're in my yard. As a matter of fact, the police came and had to get them out of my yard. So well, I, I brought it up because I think pigs are, are notoriously hard to keep in. I, so <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm just throwing this out there that there's, those pigs, I don't know where they are now, but uh, like I, I, I haven't seen them, but they've been in my yard. I I with, contrary to popular belief, they don't fly. <laughs> yeah. I live with 10,000 pigs, the biggest pig farm in all of New England, which is Martin Crest. 
So that was my, and that was the back hill. So we know pigs and we know pig smell. Because uh, my whole, in the 50s and 60s and 70s, that was that Auburn pig farm, the biggest one ever in New England, is the one that's on Prospect Hill. We won't go into Goody's World Atlas of Pig Distribution, 1978, which my girlfriend bought me the book, and it was only one black dot in all of New England, which every black dot represented 10,000 pigs, and it was one. It was a Martin Brothers pig farm. You go out Midwest, they're all over the place. That, that was the, so I, I know pigs, and they did get out, the pigs, but, I, if they're getting out over here, well, we're gonna. I'll, make, I'll bring it up pigs to my client like, that they. Pigs can turn in like wet areas if it's warm, so they're gonna head for a wet area yeah, first, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're gonna root the hell out of it. I'm just gonna tell you that. So make sure he's got very good containment around that. I so. can say I didn't see any wallowing. I can say that for sure in they anything will. that I find. It's hot. They will. So that's the first so, place they'll go. One point in the summer. Yeah, you're giving them away free. You had so many of them. I don't know now, what. You're saying he's got more back again, but I haven't seen them. I, you know. I, I seen a couple of big ones and a bunch of babies. I, I the know. only thing I, I did about that whole thing is <laughs> smell like a bugger. <laughs> <laughs> it re brought me back to my old days. You know, went back at the house because they yes. they don't change the smell at all. Make a motion. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the special conditions are to, I, you know, to. Yes. Um, I shut them down. Parcel out that metal that he's not converting yep. to agriculture. Um, the special conditions on the replication cited on the plan. The monitoring by a professional wetland scientist. Um, that would be about it right now. And the moving of the of the um, pig pen. The graveling of that road. We do have that gravel road in there. Going to the pig pen. Yeah, it's it's on the it's on the, the plan. I'm talking about special conditions. I'm going to write about in the order. Thank you, Matt. Are there any other questions from the from butters? Oh, I, I did find the stream stat. I thought it was in there, but in yeah, we, case uh, I'm, I'm not worried about that. It's part of that It's the last exhibit. So we can okay. can we vote on this tonight? We yes, you can. This. We can with your special conditions. Yes. Okay. Is there any more questions from the board? I just have one quick question. If, if he doesn't comply, I mean, I don't know where, as a board, if we have a, what is our power to say that that's it, we're done with you? I mean, this is this has been going on for a long time. We spent a lot well, of money. We, it, once we issue an order of conditions, the copy of the order of conditions then goes to DEP. Yeah. Considering the DEP commented on it fairly heavily for DEP, and I know the particular agent that's on it, if we start having enforcement issues where we start issuing, you know, we can issue tickets under our local bylaw, um, you know, for fines. Um, considering my experience with Mr. Burlingame and Landcourt, that ought to be fun. But from the DEP perspective, once there's an order on file, if it's not being complied with, I can simply go to the agent at DEP that oversaw the commentary and refer it to her. And then they'll they'll step in. The amount of time we spent on this thing, and it's just a, it seems like a guy is repetitively not complying. So they'll step in. I've lost patience with it. So. so make sure he does it right. That's a, that's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, you know, we spent we spent more time on this thing than we've done on on, on anything in the last year. Mr. Chair, can I just ask another question? <laughs> so ridiculous. Well, the landlord, the, the, uh, the homeowner too, has uh, been trying to sell the property for the past couple of years or whatever, too, off and on. So, the order of conditions goes with the land; it doesn't so, go with the person. So, the next the person that, if he does sell, the next person it would be to compel has to comply to finish to, to finish yes. the project. Yep, and they would have to be, you know, obviously disclosure laws, and considering it would be recorded against the deed. It would stick out like a sore thumb. Oh, I understand that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And just, and my concern too is, what if Mr. Kowalski decides to walk away again at some point? Well, then Mr. Renucci is going to have to hire another wetlands person to do the supervision of the wetlands replication, um, or he can deal with Kimberly Roth over DEP. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. And she's she's a tough nut. She's a good girl, but she's not. She, she's she's <coughs> tough. All right, so there's no more questions from the <coughs> from the butters. No more questions from the board. I'll close the public hearing at 7.20. If someone can make a motion. Just, just for the continuation notice of intent? Nope. 
Uh, it would be to approve an order of conditions with the special conditions I enumerated earlier. Okay. That was for the supervision on the wetland replication, for the moving of the pig pen, the exclusion of the meadow that he's redoing from the agricultural exemption, that if he decides to work in that area, he'll have to come back. Okay, so it's a notice of intent with, all, with, with Matt Morrow's order conditions. Order, order, order conditions. conditions. For 52 Center Road. Make a motion. The sign with his Second. sign in. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't know what it was. In the meantime, I'm just going to sit here and smile. <clears throat> okay, so. So, Jim, and I second it. Yep. You're going to have to. With that. The order conditions with the special conditions with is Matt noted by Matt. Order conditions, yeah. Okay. So, a motion's been made and seconded with the special conditions outlined by our wetland consultant. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Do you need this, Glenn? No, I, I left two copies for the yeah, board. Yeah, yeah we've, we've got one here. I've got a PDF. Thing. I'm up. You guys can have this one. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, though. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we can't sign that tonight either because we don't have the money. Um, as far as going anywhere, I turned 65 last year and I said I was going to retire in 10 years. So hopefully, if this thing keeps working, we'll, we'll be there to do it. <laughs> well, I'm around to see it. <laughs> Thank you again for it very much. <clears throat> okay. Wow. Next is a certificate of plans. Compliance for Lions Road subdivision. This is for the original subdivision. It was never done in its current configuration. A new one and a new order took its place. So I recommend that we release this as an invalid order because it was never carried out. Okay. So we don't even need to I'll vote on this. Do we? I'll be there. Yeah, you, you always vote on a certificate. Okay. Someone like to vote on this? I make a motion that we uh, we grant the Certificate of Compliance for the original Lyons Estate Subdivision. Second. A motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We don't have minutes from the last meeting, right? No, we don't. Any other business? Uh, the M MACC dues are. Yeah, do we vote that now or do you vote? just sign it? No, you just sign it. There's yeah. no votes on those. No. To my monthly invoice doesn't go for signature. It just because I have a, like a, I guess a contract with the town, mm -hmm. just goes straight down to them. Oh, okay. Because my fee was set by them. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> so we have to go back to the office to sign the documents for the yeah. yeah. No, I can pass it out here. I have it here. Oh, you made it? Yeah. But you can close up the meeting if it Okay. Much All right. So wants to make a motion to adjourn. So I'll move at 7:23. I'm on that one. Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion second. and second it to adjourn. 723. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.